Hi, I'm Kerry Short from Phillips Healthcare. We're here virtually at University of Chicago to talk with Dr. Roberto Lang, the Director of Non-Invasive Cardiology, about how COVID-19 impacts the heart and how his Echolab has adapted to provide care for these patients. This video will actually be done in two parts. Part one will focus on the left heart and part two will focus on the right heart. So welcome, Dr. Lang. Well, thank you, Kerry, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me and thank you for allowing me to share uh, our uh, experiences with uh, COVID-19. Now, when we talk about ultrasound and COVID-19, most of that discussion is around lung ultrasound. So has your department played any role in that? Well, it's a, actually a very good question. We learned very quickly how to do uh, the lung ultrasound. We had dabbled with it um, previously. And this is some examples in which you can see uh, that we can look at the, at the notched, thickened uh, pleura, and then we can see these uh, beelines in, in, in these examples. And these beelines actually give us uh, quite a lot of information of a consolidated lung, or lung with, uh, with fluid inside it, and at times you can see air bronchograms. So I would encourage everybody to start learning how to use ultrasound. The good thing is that you can use your equipment that you already have in order to do that. And acquisition is relatively easy. So I think we all should start incorporating this because we can provide additional information on congestion of the heart and heart failure uh, using this technique. Well, that's great that your team was able to use their existing systems to perform lung ultrasound. But of course, our main focus here today is just to discuss the impact of COVID-19 on the heart. So can you help us understand the ways in which you see this manifest? Let me tell you that uh, COVID-19 impacts the left heart uh, quite a lot. I think it, it happens in approximately 60 to 65 percent of the cases and I think you can sort of separate them and most of the cases you can fit in one, in, in one of these uh, categories. You can have patients that have a sort of normal or a hyperdynamic left ventricular function of the heart. Then I'm going to show you some cases of where you can see that some regional wall motion abnormalities that look like a Takasubo cardiomyopathy happen. Uh, I will show you examples of an acute myocardial infarction and also a case or cases of diffuse cardiac uh, dysfunction. Let me tell you, first of all, that these patients, unfortunately, are very sick. And many of these patients are coughing and sitting and uh, cannot place themselves in a nice left decubitus position. And therefore, the, the echoes that I will show you are not these beautiful echoes, but these are probably more technically difficult echoes. You will see that in all of the patients, we acquired them without an EKG because we wanted to minimize the exposure of the sonographer with uh, the patient. So one of the categories that we found was that there is a large group of patients that have completely normal left ventricular function. And you can see this nicely here in both the parasternals and in the apical views, but also normal right ventricular size and function acquired in this right ventricular focused view. There is a, another group of patients that we found, many of them that, that present with a very, as you can see here, hyperdynamic LV function. Now, why hyperdynamic LV function? Well, this could be the response to a systemic inflammation. It could be due to preload augmentation and a decrease in afterload. Many of these patients had to be resuscitated with a lot of fluids. And you can see here nicely the use of contrast in this example, how it helps to delineate the uh, endocardial border. Many of these patients, or all of these patients, had IVs, so it was not so complicated 
to do the administration of contrast. Let me present to you this very interesting patient. This is a patient that uh, presents with a technically difficult echo. You look at this very carefully and you say, is there or isn't there an abnormality in the apex? When we gave a contrast to this patient, we could see definitely that there is hypokinesis of the entire apex. The base of the heart continues to contract uh, nicely. This is a typical sort of presentation like what we traditionally talk about a Takatsubo cardiomyopathy. Interestingly, in this patient, we had a previous echo that was acquired one year ago. And you can see that in this uh, particular patient, we also use contrast and that wall motion abnormality was not present. Let me present to you now a yet another a case. And this is a patient that presents with an acute myocardial infarction. We heard a lot of this at the beginning of COVID. And the reasons why these patients develop myocardial infarction is because they have maybe high levels of catecholamines. They can have spasm of the epicardial coronary arteries. They could have microvascular dysfunction. You can see in this particular patient really nicely the akinesis of the apical septum. And you can see that in this patient has a huge apical thrombus that was not visualized in the non-contrast image. And uh, of course, uh, this is another or the last category of patients. There are patients that present with no obvious regional wall motion abnormality, but they have a diffuse cardiac dysfunction as seen in these apical views. And you can see again that the left ventricular ejection fraction was put in the category of moderately severe with a left ventricular ejection fraction of uh, 34%. So thanks for sharing those compelling cases, Dr. Lang. It really shows how COVID-19 impacts the heart. Now we all know that strain and 3D echo are accepted methods to evaluate LV function in all patients. Do you have any experience using these techniques with COVID-19 patients? That's a, that's, a, that's a interesting question. You know, at the beginning we were trying to, we were nervous and anxious and we're trying to minimize the exposure time of a sonographer with these patients. Then as we got experience and we got really good at doing it, we started to actually do exactly that. And in this particular patient, we did a heart model and you can see here with the heart model, the left ventricular ejection fraction was 35%, uh, uh, exactly the same number as we got with a biplane uh, echo. And of course you get additional information as left atrial volumes and, and things like that. So this is a, a nice example of the utility. This does not take any time. You need, of course, to get an EKG, but you can do this extremely uh, quickly. And you know, using auto strain in this particular uh, patient, you can see how, uh, let me tell you first of all, that we do not display or arrange these images in the room. You know, we acquire an apical four, apical three, apical two, and then once we are back in the echo lab, then we, we calculate strain just to avoid the contact. You can see very beautifully how this uh, sort of works very nicely. And in this particular patient, in keeping with a decreased uh, ejection fraction, we could get actually a, a strain or average strain of the apical views of 8%. So I think, uh, Kerry, in this uh, couple of minutes, I, I showed you that COVID can affect the left heart in many different shapes and ways. And uh, it is actually very interesting. And I think that we will have to learn, and we will in the next future, we will learn a lot of what on how you present, what type of outcome you should expect in a patient. So there's a lot of, of things that we still need to learn. Wow, yes, this is still, we're still learning a lot about all of this. 
but so interesting to see how COVID-19 impacts the left side of the heart and that clearly it's the primary and first area to focus on when assessing these patients. So this was part one. In part two of the series, we'll talk about the unique impact to the right side of the heart. Thank you so much, Dr. Lang. Thank you.